Joined by Shane Horgan, Matt Williams, Rob Kearney. Let's reflect on Ireland 29, Wales 7. It's just gone full time. I think we can live with that. We can. <laughs> There's a lot of smiles in the studio. Um, it was a marvellous performance. This is one of the key anxieties that we had leading into the Six Nations is could Ireland transport their form that was certainly improved in autumn into the Six Nations and the difficulties and the pressures that are unique to the Six Nations. And they dealt with it fantastically. It was probably as good a performance or a kick-off performance in the Six Nations from Ireland as I've seen in a very, very long time, particularly the way their forwards and backs interacted. And we saw the start of that, the genesis of it, uh, maybe in England last year, but definitely through the autumn series. And they looked formidable, I have to say. Now, we caveat it that you know, Wales are under strength and they're just Adams playing at 13, but Ireland did exactly what they should do and exploited that. Mm. What's your take to you, Matt? I, I think the fact that Ireland can get a lot better. There's still a lot of improvement in that side. They won't be happy with... Because they set very high standards. They won't be happy that every time they got the ball to that edges and they had opportunities, they just couldn't quite get that that full-back role or the, the third runner's role exactly right. But that was so impressive to say that when you're getting five tries and you've got a lot more in the tank, and they will get better as they spend more time together and more games, it, it was um, a very, very dominant display and uh, a dominant display defensively as well. They defended really, really well against was Probably a few questions on the edges. The wingers jam in. France might be pretty happy with that. But certainly against the team they played today, that was um, a, a complete performance from set play, backs go forward, defence, you name it, it was, uh, it was a very, very complete performance. I mean, what jumps out to a lot of us as well is this brand of rugby has continued. I mean, Ireland, for a couple of years, Rob, looked a little bit out of ideas around halfway. And now suddenly they look liable to cut a team open. I mean, why is this suddenly blossoming like this? Yeah, it's beautiful rugby, isn't it? You know, the, they have managed to get forwards now who are able to ball play as well. Mm. And, and that's the key difference in this thing. They're getting to the edges really easily mm. because you've got four or five forwards who can crash over the gain line very easily but still play that ball out to the back at top speed. They must be more of a ball-playing bunch of forwards than almost any other team. I don't want to say in the world. Let's, let's stick to this competition for a moment. But they must be right up there. Yeah, well, they've, they've, they've demonstrated that. We see it time and time again. It softens the defences up so much. And they terrorise Wales there mm. yeah, from the yeah. very first minute. And the 80th minute, clock was in the red, and they're still going. Mm. Two minutes over, over time, they could have easily kicked the ball out, but they're just going for that extra, extra try. I think, yeah. I think we've got the best uh, front row we might ever have. Certainly ball-playing front row. Yeah. You know, all those guys are dropping the ball off. They're also attacking the line at full speed. They're massive threats themselves because they're big ball carriers. They're big units. So the inside defenders are sitting down on them. The ball's being dropped off. And that's where the second wave is coming. And to Matt's point there, they haven't got the second wave quite right. They nearly have. If they did, they would have put 60 yeah, on Wales yeah. today. For that's sure. how good they were. For but sure. what I love seeing, and I think you know, this is a big change in Irish rugby, the ball's getting out to the wings. You know, for, for too many years, we've had too many good players out in the wings starve for possession. But we saw the amount of possessions both um, both wings got today was incredible. And, you, you know, it, it's, it's no surprise when you give them ball in a bit of space, they're going to do good yeah. things. Mm. And that's what we saw. And, and it comes back to Robbie's point. Because the forwards are uh, gain line theory again, Joe, they're taking the ball to the line. The defence has to stay because the forwards are such a threat running. And then they're a metre and a half or so away from the defence. They're doing these beautiful soft passes that very few forwards around... Them. Certainly, I, I said to Robbie as we were watching this, Tyke Furlong, I, I have never seen a tight head prop with the ball <laughs> skills that he's yeah. got. I've just never seen it. Mm. He is extraordinary. And, and two of those tries came from short passes from him that you'd expect a good out-half to give. Yeah, But then when he carries Matt, he's... Pulling oh, yeah. people out of the way. It's not like that's his only skill and we're re he's relying on that. He's not. He's first and foremost a brilliant scrummager yeah. and ball carrier, but he's got all this other stuff. Yeah, and, and that's why they've got a hold, because if, if, if he doesn't pass, yeah. he'll break the line. Yeah. So it's, they're just bottling these defenders up with their forwards that are yeah. threats and then going wide out wide. It's, it's really great. Rob, you played with him. Did he always have those hands or has he been encouraged more to no, develop it or where is he? He's, he's definitely always had those hands, but... 
you know, you've got to credit Stuart Lancaster a little bit in, in this as well. He has developed some of these guys enormously in the past few years okay. and their ability to be comfortable on the ball and to improve their distribution skills. And so a national coach in Farrell is reliant on that work being done day to day? Yeah, I think so, because that's the time when players develop themselves. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to go into international camp and improve yourself as a player because you've got a week out to an international test game. I every national coach is dependent on the coaches below him. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you come in and you're you, really with a national team, you're sure you want to keep the skills going, you know, you're not going to deteriorate them. But it's just Robbie's point. You, you're just trying to get the team together. Mm. And, and from for, for my point of view, it builds on what Robbie's doing. They've adopted a Leinster, a Leinster template mm. and, and put it into the national side. And that's, that's delivering the goods. Philosophy yep. and the feeling in the camp is what the head coach of the national team does. Mm. That's yes. what they do. That's what he said, an overall mm. game plan. But individual skills, that's done in the uh, provinces. or yeah, But it's amazing as well to see Ty Byrne now. He's improved his distribution skills enormously in the last mm. year or so. Yeah. You know, he created a couple of tries today. Mm. And, you know, when you're training with these guys on a daily basis, when you go into national camp, it forces you to improve your own skills as well. Mm. And, you know, he's made enormous strides in his game and, and a standout player for Ireland today. He, he'd be looking around at training, Robbie, saying, wow, did you see that pass that Furlong did? Or did, you, did, you, did, you, did you see the pass that Porter did? Oh, I've got to get that into my game. Yeah. And, that, and that's internal competition it, drives it, that It's infectious, Matt. Um, and you can, it, it, it you know, feeds into the whole team yeah. philosophy. And if you notice, if you go back over the tape, we'll do it later on, the mindset for Irish forwards now is you carry the ball forward, but looking for the option for the pass to the up low. Yeah. Mm. That's a huge development in the last 18 months. Huge. Yeah. It wasn't there before. Right. And if you look at the Wales teams, it was tuck the ball into the shoulder and carry into someone. And we also noticed the footwork from the Irish players is really significantly better as well. So on the basis of that 80 minutes, and this is for all of you, are we now saying that Ireland have maybe nudged ahead of France as favourites for this competition, pending... <laughs> France tomorrow and COVID and what their situation is. But, I mean, all is well here, but oh, listen to I you I will three. answer that question about five <laughs> o'clock. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, look, I, I think what it has done is said Ireland are really in this championship. Mm. They played magnificent rugby. They brought it on from November. Uh, everyone in the camp deserves credit, especially Andy Farrell, for, for the way the team has changed so, so greatly over the last six months. They're in the hunt. And isn't next is the next uh, game against France in Paris going to be an absolute belter? Yeah, we're looking forward to it here. Because 12 months ago, I mean, no understatement to say you thought Jury was significantly out on Farrell and Cat in a big way. Absolutely, because I didn't think we saw any progress in the you know, first couple of years in, in, um, of his reign. It just it wasn't there. And actually, I thought we were going backwards. It looked as if that he had taken a version of what Joe Schmidt was doing, which by the end of what Joe Schmidt was doing was out of date mm. and carried it on. And I think what we're seeing... Uh, what we saw it, it begin at the, during the England game last year in the Six Nations and take a massive jump in the Autumn Series is moving away from a rigid uh, play-by-numbers, really coach-driven, this is what you do in yes. this circumstance every time, yeah. to uh, a little bit more um, uh, you know, um, f focus on the players to react to what they see in front of them. But more than that, the box-kicking policy has completely changed. The retention of ball is completely changed. The, the quality of rook has completely changed. And that has happened, Joe, only in the last six to nine months because mm. it wasn't there before. And we were seriously worried before that England game. And I think we had good reason to be. But the picture has changed, whether that be with Paul O'Connell coming in, with Farrell adapting, with Farrell bringing O'Connell in, which is a big thing, mm. yeah. or with the players um, realising what Farrell wants them to do. And as Rob said, the work that's going on in the provinces is reason. They're all factors, but whatever the, we're not sure what the secret formula is, but at the moment it's looking very good. Yeah. Can I throw one more thing into that, Shane? He's got his selection right. The selection of the team. And everyone questioned, oh, you know, is it two Leinster bases? Where are we going with this? You know, even Hanson selection. He has got his selection right since November. Well, it's even extraordinary. Gibson Park doesn't seem to be in front of the queue in Leinster. What is the pecking order at Leinster? Nobody really knows what the pecking order is there. You know, G Gibson Park is... He's been a key factor in the improvement in this Irish team. Mm, mm, you know, yeah. the, the speed of ball that he gets to Johnny Sexton to allow them get out to those edges. And that's probably the biggest criticism of this Irish team over the last number of years. They've been guilty of playing inside the 15 metres 
too often, mm. which makes them so easy to defend. Now we see the wingers touching the ball, as Shane mentioned earlier, so many times. It must be a joy to play on this team mm. out on the edges. Mm. Okay.